people can help you out in the field. So I'm just going to turn off my camera now. We're going to dive right into the app. At the end of the session, we'll definitely have time for questions. So feel free to gather those together, send them off in the chat to Tyler, and uh, she'll ask them at the end of our session. Thank you very much. So our mobile app here, first of all, all we have to do is log into the Build Pro app. So what I'm just going to log into the app right now. And yes, I'd like to go online and sync this information. I actually have it up to send up some notifications saying some errors, just so that you can see what we have to do if you do get any errors when you're using our app. Right now, you can see the mobile app here. So some of the things we're gonna cover in today's session are working offline. So if we're working offline, um, sometimes you might have to do this or want to do this to be able to get to areas on your job sites that don't have any uh, internet connection or any Wi-Fi connection. Very simple to do this. All we have to do is go to the top corner of our screen on the left-hand side and hit the job list section. This is going to give us a list of different menu items that we can peruse from. We need to choose our offline jobs before we start working offline. So to do that, all we have to do is click the offline jobs. You'll be presented with all of the jobs that you typically would see in the regular, that you have access to on the web version of Build Pro. I could choose to select all of Cottonwood Place if I wanted to at the moment, or if I want to select certain jobs, I can open up Cottonwood Place and either flag or unflag the jobs that I do or don't want to add onto the app. So forgetting here that I'm on the computer. So all we have to do is flag or unflag this one here and when you're using the app. So you can pick and choose all the ones that you'd like to use. Then when you're ready, all you have to do is go back up into the top left-hand side of your screen. I could go back to the jobs list, but right now I'd like to turn it to offline mode so that I get this red circle instead of a green circle on my screen. It always lets me know the last time I've switched modes. So I'm just going to say yes. I want to download this information. And at the very bottom of the screen, you can see it's initializing and downloading. So now when you go into the app in the top right hand side here, you can see that I'm working in offline mode. And I have three items here that still need to be synced. The next thing we're going to cover today is going in and updating tasks. We'll just start at the top of our list here. Um, in job 1139 or 1129, as I grow, go down the screen, you're going to be able to see all the different tasks that I have ac access to and need to review and complete today. So I'm just going to go back up to the top of the screen right now. Um, if I need the install cabinet, Say that one was completed or I even need to reschedule, all I have to do is click on that task. Here, I'd be able to reschedule the task, complete it, or even cancel a task if I needed to. So if I wanted to reschedule, I could do that right from here. Um, going down the screen here, I see that the pour slab needs to be completed. So let's complete that one today. All I have to do is click on the complete. It'll go great, letting me know that I've actually um, executed an item on that particular task. We can also send notes to our trades and suppliers. So from here, let's just scroll down the screen. Let's start a task and send a note as well. We'll try that on the frame labor one here. So if I wanted to start it, I could just hit the start button right from here, or I can open this task up. I can start the task right from here. And I can also, at the very bottom of the screen, there's a notes section. So in here, I could add in some quick note items. I'm just gonna click on here and um, typically you'd be able to do a recording, but because I'm broadcasting from my phone right now, that's the only reason I can't actually type that information. But in here, we could start to, um, just type in what we need to for communication with trades and suppliers. Then hit the return button, gets us down the page, 
we'll just click anywhere in the upper portion here and we have this information. So I can send a note to the trade and supplier as well. I'm gonna start this task first. And then I could go ahead and send the note to the trade and supplier. Next on our list is checklist items. So you may have noticed at the very top of this screen, I have a forms slab area here. In the form slab area, it just says reschedule, but I'm supposed to complete that today. That's letting me know that I also have task list or ta uh, tasks or checklist items that I need to complete in this particular section. So to be able to complete those, all I have to do is go to the task and switch over those radio dials. Now that I've completed those checklist items, all the same features that you have in your regular Bill Pro job schedule, I can go ahead and complete this task. Or I could even complete it with exception, um, letting us know that there may be, there was a mess left on the job site and uh, we want the trade and supplier to go in and clean that up before we actually release this task to be paid. So today let's just complete this with exception. Uh, you're about to complete the task with exception. Are you sure you'd like to do this? We're just gonna say yes. Oh, well, apparently I'm not authorized to do that. So we will just complete this task today and go back to the main page. So it lets you know at all times if you do or do not have permission to do these tasks. Um, most of the time, all of these tasks will follow the same rules that you have on your standard Bill Pro schedules if you're using the web version. So the next on our item is removing those holds off of the task list. So let's go over to a different job that I know I've got some tasks that are on hold right now. Let's go into 1135. So here we can see the same things, reschedule, complete, all of those features we were using before, but we still have that blue check mark letting us know that we've completed the task to continue to progress our schedule. But this task is on hold as well. So if it's on hold and we want to remove that hold because whoever has maybe you know cleaned the site or done whatever you needed them to do, we can go in, there is the whole held task, and I can go over uh, permissions based and hit remove hold. Are you sure you want to remove this hold? And we're gonna say yes, we're gonna remove the hold. And then I'm just gonna go back to my main schedule. And then when I refresh, this hold will be removed. Now, I don't know if you noticed or not, but in the top right-hand side of my screen, the quantity is continuing to change, letting me know, because I'm working offline, that I've performed eight different tasks, including those three that I had at the very beginning, and it's just gathering all of that information so that when I go back into an area with connectivity, I can actually download all that information and be right up to speed like I was before. I apologize there, there we go. I'll be right up to speed like I was before in my job schedule. From here though, we can also take and view job options. So at the very bottom of the screen, there's three dots. When I click on those three dots, I can see my job detail. So I can still get into all of that information on the customer, their phone number, some job information, all of that is here for me. I click those three dots one more time, I could have chosen job options. So if I go to my job options here, this is going to present me live, just like it normally would, with all of the options that the customer has added to this particular job, or even if it's a spec home, all the options that your team has added to the job. So we've got the date that it was added and a timestamp, just like you normally would be presented with. Next, we'll go into attaching photos. So from here, at the very bottom of the screen, there is a paper clip. So on the paper clip, if I click that, I can see all of my job document information and that sort. But if I'm walking the site and I wanted to take a picture, um, I have two options. I can, first of all, go into this upload section. Apologize. We could go into the upload section and load a photo that you already have on your camera. Probably because I'm broadcasting right now, you can't see it. But I'm just going to click on the photo here. 
uh, and you're going to have to trust me on that one. Normally, you'd be able to click on the photo, but because I'm actually streaming from my phone right now onto the webinar, you can't see that the photos aren't working. But normally, you would just click on the photo, and you can take a picture as you're walking the job site, or you could click the upload, and it would look for the photos that are in your existing camera reel, and you could take and upload one of those photos. Um, attaching photos we've already gone into. This one here, I wanted to actually show you how you could open up existing job file photos. So when we go down here, I could go into the main floor plan. I have the ability, because I'm on my phone right now, to zoom in, zoom out. You've got all of that information here for you. I did attach a photo earlier of a drywall hole, so I took a picture on site. You can see that information here. Um, I also took another photo just so you can see how those photos are working in the quality. And again, you can zoom in. We've got some drywall touch-ups that need to be happening here. So you've got all of that information. The nice thing about these is if you were on your main page, I don't know if you noticed from the top here, you could actually take and send that information to whoever you're working with out in the field. So you could actually text a photo or send it to an email. However, you normally like to send information, you can also use that feature right from the app as well. And there's one other feature here that I didn't list today, and that is EPOs. So while you're on a job, we could be right within an actual job task itself. So if I needed to write an EPO to this tile that self supply or the carpet here, I could click on this task. And in the bottom left-hand side of the screen is where you're going to get to that EPO creator, just like you normally would on your website. However, this is all on the phone right now. So here I could go in and create the EPO. It's remembering it because I was on a task specifically right from the task purchase order. So you're still getting that flooring service. All of this information is pulling in automatically. I could put a quantity in here from what my original PO had, or I could go down to the bottom area here, and in this section, I can type in delivery. If we need to add to some delivery into here, um, then I could put in a quantity and a unit price, just like I normally would. You can see that information is being populated down the screen. <clears throat> what I can do from here is I can go back up to the top or in the bottom right-hand side of the screen, I could add an additional row. But when I'm finished, all I have to do in the very, very top of the screen is hit Create EPO or Create and Mark Ready. So once I've filled in all of the information, um, currently I just have to select an EPO reason. So we're just going to say that there was stolen material on site. Now that I've added all the information that I need to, the boxes are no longer grayed out, and I could just hit Create EPO and Mark Ready. It's gonna take me right back to the task. So at this point in time, I'd like to open it up for questions. Anybody have any questions or concerns about the app that maybe I haven't addressed at this time? Hey, Nicole, so yes, we do have a few questions for you to answer. Um, okay. A few of the questions that came across, the first one is, is the app an extra charge that we have to pay for? No, the app is not an extra charge, so all you'd have to go to is um, one of the app stores and download it either on your um, iPhone or on your Android, and you'll be able to access the Bill Pro app right from there. Awesome. Another question, how do I get a username and password for the application? Awesome. Um, actually, your username and password that you use on your standard login um, when you're either using your tablet or your computer is the same username and password that you would use to log into the Bill Pro app. Awesome. Can I use both the app and mobile? JME or even the standard website version of Build Pro. 
Awesome, thank you. Uh, yes, you can. So when you're using, if you like to use your desktop version and then maybe you're out in the field with an area where you don't have any connectivity, you definitely can use the app as well. So you can move back and forth between both platforms. Okay, do the trades and suppliers also have an app? They do, actually they have two apps. They have their standard Supply Pro app and then there is also a Supply Pro GM app for them. Oh, and Tyler, there was one other item that I did miss, and I don't know if you have a couple more questions there, but there is an item that I did miss. I forgot to show everybody how to take and uh, resync when we're done. So to do that, because we've got the nine and I'm still working offline, all I have to do is go back to my jobs list, and then we want to turn that circle back to green. So all I'd have to do is hit the sync and work off work online button again and we'd be back in online mode did any more questions come in sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you there tyler no worries yes we do have another one our app doesn't seem to work very well a lot of the time what is the best way to get help with bugs oh perfect thank you um if you do have any bugs or anything like that the standard help uh so the um support at hyphen solutions.com um, email that you would typically uh, use to turn in any tickets or anything like that. That is what you can use um, to gain access for sure. And the team will, will phone you, or if they're available, they will take your call right away um, and, and reconnect via a ticket just like they normally would. Awesome, that's all the questions that came through, Nicole. Okay, perfect, well thanks, Tyler. Awesome, well thank you guys for joining us for our second Toolbox Talk. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to contact sales with the phone number and email that's listed here at the top. And um, if you have any questions later, feel free to you know ask those questions and we'll have somebody be sure to reach out to you. Perfect, thanks Tyler. Oh, wait, 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 sorry. We have somebody who says he has a question. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, no we... problem. He says, I have a question, but he hasn't told me the question just yet. <laughs> <laughs> he says, our toes are smart in here, just like my photos were. <laughs> um, go ahead, Matt. What question did you have for us before we go ahead and sign off? No, Matt, we can't hear you. We'll have to type it into the box if you have a question. Well, we're waiting for that question, Tyler, as well for those that, for whoever did ask that question about support. When you log out of the app, you do have that support email address here, and there's a phone number that you can contact actually as well. So if you're having problems logging in, forgotten your password, you can use that. You've got your support email and the phone number that you can use. Okay, Matt says that he'll reach out to us via email or phone call because um, it's, it's a lot to type. So he'll go ahead and reach out to us later for his question. Okay, perfect. We'll be looking for that question. Thanks, Matt. All right, well, everybody have a wonderful Tuesday and this recording will be available on our website and on our toolbox talk page if you guys um, want to review it again in the future and any attendees should also receive it via email. So you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Tyler. Bye.